Right, hello, welcome back to another video. So I'm not quite back to normality yet. Um, I've been helping out on the farm with harvest and doing a bit of land work. So I haven't been in the workshop, you know, as much as normal. So I've got a few catch up jobs to do. They're not particularly interesting, but some of the jobs that I think are not very interesting, the videos still do quite well. So I'll take you along with me anyway, show you what I'm on with. So if you watched the previous video, I said at the end that I had two new machines coming this is one of them it's not brand new obviously but it's new to me so it's a bigger milling machine because my old one i was limited on space but this one you can put riser blocks in there so you can you know you've got a lot more space between the quill and the bed i'll probably do a separate video on that because i've got a dro to fit on it i've also got an indexing head as well um, but yeah i've got an indexing i've got a dro to fit on it and then i've got to put it in position and get it where i want it but yeah that should be a good addition to the workshop so, like I say, I'll do a video on that separate, but I just thought I'd show you it. Um, and the other machine I've got come in is, is brand new. Um, I emailed them on Tuesday, it's Thursday now, and they said it'll be ready within the next two weeks. So, when the new machine comes, it'll free up some space, and then that'll go where the old machine is. I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, until the other new machine comes, I haven't really got anywhere to put that at the moment. Anyway, I'll get on with the first catch-up job. So, got these subsoiler legs. Well, this is like obviously already together as it should be. But then the customer has got some new legs. He's got four new legs, and for some reason they don't come with a top on them. You can see this has been welded up across there. So what I've got to do is make some new tops to weld onto these legs. So I've already got. Well, there's one of them. I've already got the tops cut out. But what I did is I drew it all in CAD first, obviously. Took some reference points as reference points off here. Drew it in CAD. I cut this out first, just out of two mil. Make sure the drawing was right, which it is near enough. So cut them out of, can't remember if they're 15 or 20 mil. 20 mil. Cut these out of 20 mil. There's another, another three. <coughs> another three is still there. So I'll, I'll lift them out and I think I'll tack them all together. Tack all four together. And I've got this hole to mark on and I'll drill and ream this hole out to 30 mil. So I've got them three tacked together. Before I get carried away and tack the fourth one on, I need to get the centre hole for where, where that hole needs to be. So I'll lay this leg on top of this one and then mark through it. And then I'll tack this one onto there and then drill all them through at the same time.
So I've got that mounted on there now, ready to drill. Uh, but another job's coming now, so I'll have to get on with this other job and then we'll get back to this one. So this roller has just come in and as you can see, it's worn through on the end. So I have some tube, but I haven't got any of the same diameter as this. But he said it's just like a support roller underneath a conveyor. So he says it doesn't matter if it's slightly smaller. So the tube that I have is um, 80, wait, about 89 millimetres, where this was 100 millimetres. So I'll chop this off, I'll put it in the lathe and I'll turn them down a little bit so they fit inside the tube that I have. And I can use the same shaft and the same end plates and then just, just replace the, the outer roller. So this is a bit of tube that I'm gonna use. I've just cut it off roughly with the angle grinder out in the yard. I'll put it in the chop saw now and chew it up. I say it's slightly smaller than the original one, but it's all I've got and I need it sorting for tomorrow. So should get them up and running again. So I've got the old uh, skin cut off the roller, that's what was in the middle of it. So now if I put that in the lathe and turn them down so they'll fit inside that tube and then that'll be the new outer. Right, so I've got all them machined down. Anyway, I'll clean them up around the end and I'll have to grind on each one a little slot into it to make room for the seam. For the seam in there. I'll have to clean up in there a bit and then hopefully that should slide nice and tight down inside there and then just weld around the ends.
So that's fitting there, beautiful. Took a bit of knocking in, but it's nice tight fit. So I'll centra centralize it up. So there's equal space at either end and then we'll weld it round. Right, so that's the men's welded round. So that should get them going again. So that's that job done. We'll go back to his subsider legs now. So they're all clamped down on there now. Um, I have a proper set of, I don't know what you call them, clamps now. I got them at the same time as I got my milling machine. So they're a lot handier rather than using, well, I'm still using bits of plate and what have you, but instead of using all this lot, I've actually got a proper setup now. I'll get there eventually with tools, but yeah, so I'll drill that through first. I'll pilot it through with it's like a 13 mil. Then we'll run a 28 through and then well maybe a bit bigger than 28 and then a 30 mil reamer. <laughs> So I've got that piloted through, but just looking at the 
the old leg. See, this hole measures, well, just over 30 mil. Um, it's like, it's a bit warm, so it measures like 31 in one direction and 31.6 in the other direction. I spoke to the customer and he says that there's an M30 bolt that goes through there and that is like the, the pivot of the leg. And then when the shear bolt or shear tab snaps, whatever it has, it pivots on there and swings back. So what I'm thinking is if I remit it through at 30 mil, so it's accurate, the chances of the shear bolt or the, the pivot bolt seizing in is quite high um, because you can go a while, you can go quite a while sometimes without the shear bolt snapping or what have you. So same on plows, they can, they can seize up solid sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the hole out rather than ream it. I'm going to drill it out at like 30 point. 360 measures or one inch and 1364s, whatever ridiculous measurement that is in Imperial. So I'm going to drill it out with that, and then it has a bit of bit of tolerance. And it shouldn't shouldn't rust in then, and it, you know, it has a bit of free play for when the shear bolt snaps. Right, so they're all drilled up. I've uh, ground the tacks down. So they need some weld prep putting on here now, both sides. Um, it doesn't matter too much, you know, what kind of weld prep I put on it. It just wants v out so there's, you know, you can get a good weld, good couple of runs of weld in there. Right, so they're all ready now. I've ground all the legs down, prepped all them. I, I decided it was quicker with a grinder, quicker and neater with a grinder rather than the gas torch. So yeah, they're all done. So what I've done now is I've taken the, the point and the shin off this other leg. And I've laid it out and I've got, just got some bits of box section clamped onto there. You can see that one fits in there. So I can use that as a bit of a jig. Got a stop on there. And then I've just drawn around inside there. I might put a pin weld the pin to the bench. So I've got that as a jig 
to weld the other ones up so I know that you know the point is going to be in the same place same overall length same overall length and the same you know so one leg is not pointing further forward than the other or whatever so I'll lay them in now and um, tack them together Right, so we've run into a problem. You'd think them legs would be the same as them, which is what I was expecting they would be, but obviously they're not, because when you lay that where it's supposed to be, it doesn't fit. <laughs> so when that fits on that stop there, that's about near enough where that is. And then when you draw around that, it's that much bigger. So it's a bit annoying is that, if I'd have known that to start with, I'd have obviously cut them out different, but anyway, it's not too much of a problem. I'll just chop this off. It'd be easier chopping this off than it will be chopping it out of there. So it just means I've wasted a bit of time prepping it. Right, so I'll just quickly whip that bit off the top of the leg. It fits now, so. Bit of a pain in the ass having to do this, but um, yeah, I wasn't expecting them to be different to that one. Anyway, shouldn't set me back too much. Right, so they are ready to weld up now. I've got them all tacked together. I'm just going to do two at a time so I can clamp them to the bench. So I'll do like a root pass first, turn it over, root pass on the other side, clamp them back down and then fill in the V. I'm just going to put some little runoff plates on as well, just so I have somewhere to start and stop on rather than stopping on the edge. Uh, it's 20 mil plate, so I might just give it a little bit of preheat as well before before I start welding.
So I'm having a real problem with flies today. They keep coming, obviously they're attracted to the weld and then they come and jump into your weld. Um, and it makes your weld go bubbly. So I have to keep stopping. If I see a fly, I have to stop, blow it out with airline and then carry on again. So I've just done a cap weld over the top of them. It smells like a vegan's barbecue in here with all these dead flies. Fried flies. Look at them all. Right, so that's all then welded up. So I did a root pass and then two welds over the top of that and then a cap over the top. The little the flies are a bloody nuisance because they get stuck in your weld or they come to your weld and then, you know, it bubbles up if you weld over them or they get stuck into your weld so then you have to grind it back out again so uh, yeah anyway that's them done so these are they're not like ripper legs for a subside uh, for a, a bulldozer or anything they are subsoil legs so they're meant to pull through the soil you know they're not getting they're not getting abuse like what ripper legs are um, and then they have a shear bolt on so if they do hit a stone it just breaks a shear bolt so you know, it's not like a lot of stuff on YouTube is mining and uh, quarry stuff, but you know, these are just for pulling through the soil, so you know, that's more than enough weld, it's more than adequate. Is that so? I'll chop these runoff plates off, smooth the end over a bit, and then that's them sorted. Look at all the flies are everywhere. So that's them done. I've cut the runoff plates off and given them a smooth over. So yeah, it's quite a fat weld that cap. It's fat as my finger. So yeah, that's, that's them done. Oh, the, the original one has some shims on here, but I don't know if I have any steel that thin, so I'll have to see what I have. But for now, that's them done. Right, so one last job of the week. We have these tines to put in this bale spike in the bottom. So I've, I'll put these top tines in a couple of weeks ago and then I've been waiting for these little ones to come and then I haven't had time since then so this is just to finish off you see the old tine bushes are absolutely knackered and then he wanted them putting in the top anyway and then he just wants some little tines to go in the bottom so you can pick up round bales and then in the bottom tine is just to stop the bales from spinning so he said he wants them to go in between here so there's not much room on this side to work so I'll get it laid flat and then I'll mark where the whole centre needs to be. Cut a hole out, 
Same on the other side. Put the bush through and then weld it in. Nice and simple. Right, so I've got them holes cut out and cleaned up. So I have a hole saw the right size for the for the tine bush, but I absolutely hate hole sawing holes, so I just use that as a guide, outside guide. And then uh, once it got cut in a little bit, I just use that as like a line to follow with the gas torch. So uh, we'll do the same on the other side now. So that's the second set of holes cut in there. So just look at this. I think whoever's made this is, needs a new set square. Look how far out that is.
Right, so that's them welded in as well now. So that's that job complete. Right, so I'm back out again in the tractor this afternoon. Uh, seeing a combine in the background. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, they're sort of like what are classes in between your jobs. I thought I'd show you anyway. So yeah, I hope you found it interesting. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.